Hi, I'm Adam uh, and I'm here in East Kent with Dave Moyes and we're going to be looking around at his really impressive collection of uh, bikes. Um, we just have a quick look at this diesel engine Enfield here. Tell us a little bit about it. Right, yeah, that's a, a diesel. Uh, it does um, just on 70 mile an hour and 170 mile to the gallon. It's a, it's a 1966 and it's a 456cc. And I did go to, to Mallorca on one and uh, come back on it as well, which was quite fun. Now we're moving on to a rather exciting looking Norton that uh, you use quite frequently, Dave. Tell us yeah, a bit about yeah. that. Yeah, I use it in the Norton Club, which we meet up in Lenham. So it's a nice little run to get there on. And it's a 500cc ES2. The model of this one is, um, is a Model 7 and it's a twin cylinder 500. And that, the year of that is 1953. That's in fabulous condition, it's fabulous. A nice, it's a nice smooth motorcycle. It's got the proper exhaust on it. We'll go to a beast that you've got hiding around the corner here, which is a Jaguar engine machine. Yeah. So it's, this, this yeah, is something it's else. A, um, it's an E-Type 4.2 litre. Um, engine, automatic gearbox and back axle and it was made by a firm Ford Alive who only makes trikes with Jaguar engines in and when you're doing 60 mile an hour all you do is just crack the throttle because it's a hand throttle and uh, it's lovely and smooth yeah it's, it's, a, it's a nice machine I found, I had, I've, had, I've had it quite a long time I had it about a couple of years before I fell in love with it and started doing a lot of work on it now I love it that's, that's lovely and, and we actually did see that down at the uh, the Heritage Sprint last year giving some charity rides which was very kind of you to do that Dave that's brilliant that's okay it was in, very enjoyable oh you looked at that in there have you that's all E-type you see this the disc the axles in shorter mm -hmm. And what have you? Procedure? Uh, battery isolator on. So I've got isolators and everything. Do that until you finish. Hear it ticking. Choke there, which is electric. Thank you to the Classic Competition Company for sponsoring this video production. The Classic Competition Company is a UK-based business that regularly raffles off rare and desirable classic motorcycles for people to win. Ticket sales into competitions are limited and draw dates are fixed. Single tickets are low cost, but you can buy multiple tickets so you can decide how many chances you'd like to win. Enter Classic 15 at the checkout for 15% off your purchase. Head over to their website and check them out today. Okay, so Dave, tell me, this it looks like a fire engine bike, but there's there's some history behind this Norton. Tell us about that. Yeah, for only one year, Norton did, it's 1959, I think it is, yeah. They did red, blue, or the silver, the gunmetal that they generally do Nortons in, and that was just for one year. 
Um, it is a little bit special because of the colour. And it's a 0.99, which is um, 600cc. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's good. It's quite good and it starts well as well. And it really stands out from the crowd as well. So yeah. uh, lo lovely bike. The only uh, trouble with it was it faded a little bit in the sun. That was a problem with the with all the red ones, as you can see there. That's a different uh, colour yeah. to that, where it's been painted before. Well, not too much chance of sunshine today. Which no, is, uh, so we're OK. So we're OK. Next in line, we've got classic Vincent. Yeah, the Vincent Comet, which is 1951. Um, very smooth, very good starter and, and good suspension. And I've had that quite a long time. And I got that very cheap to start with because the big end was gone. So I repaired all that with Roadstar and um, it, it runs very nicely now. I'm, quite, I'm very happy with that. We heard, we heard it earlier and it, it does sound beautiful, that bike. Um, now a bit more modern on the on the right here. This is uh, yeah, that's a Mark II Norton. That's the um, that's a nine six one Commando, which I bought um, from brand new until and then later on they went pop. So um, it's it's been taken over by another firm now. But it's, it's a good engine. Um, it's a push rod engine, and. Um, Got all, and it's all hand built in, Donning, in Donington Park, and it's a very nice bike to ride. It's a lo lovely looking machine, modern classic, definitely. Yeah. So then, uh, moving over towards the corner, we got this uh, yeah, blue triumph. Yeah, that's the uh, the Bonneville, a Hinkley one, made, made in um, Hinkley, of course. And um, I did Route sixty six on that in two thousand and two, and we all bought. Bonneville, so there was five of us that went on it. And uh, yeah, great bike. And that's the only blue one they made. After that, they didn't make any blue ones because the factory caught light. And uh, that was the end of the blue one. So that's quite rare as well. And that's a, that's a, a 750, that's an 850cc. That must have been quite a trip as well down Route 66 on that. Yeah, it was great. I had, I had the first service in America on that as well. Ah, lovely stuff. And. Coming to one of my personal favourites here now, and I know you know I love this thing, this aerial square four, it's not just a lovely engine, but there's a lovely bit of history on that, and uh, you can tell, tell it more about it than I could ever say. Yeah, I had a black one before I got that one, and that is a 1952, and it is the Queen's Coronation, it's called the Coronation Square Four, which was done for the Queen for 1953, and uh, she was in the Air Force in the war, but liked the colour. That's why Ariel did the special edition. It is a lovely bike to ride. Plenty of torque and um, smooth engine. It's all aluminium. Very, very unique bike, that. And, uh, I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but it's got to be one of the earliest ever limited edition vehicles. Um, and, it, and it's just immaculate. That yeah, I think you're right there, Adam, yeah. yeah. So now we're coming back to another more modern American bike, the Indian, um, which you uh, you bought locally, I believe. Yeah, I bought it locally from the foundry at Canterbury. It's um, I went to get the the um, no, I, I took the Bonneville in for an MOT, and they said you haven't rode the in Indian yet, have you? So I took that up the road, and I did fall in love with it right away. Yep. So I bought it, <laughs> as, as you and did. I've hardly used it. But <laughs> it's got the it's got the screen with it, and the saddle bags, and the sissy bar, and all that. It's a nice bike to have. Very smooth. Uh, it goes very well, but it's boring. Okay. No oil leaks. Nothing falls oh, off dear. of it. Well, it starts when you press the button as well. Exactly. Yeah. Oh no, we can't be having that. <laughs> well, in that case, we better move on to the next one because we've got a lovely BSA. But that that's a special that you put together yourself. Yeah, that that was a road rocket which I've made into a um, ro um, Rocket Gold Star uh, look-alike, Clubman. And that's a 650 iron head, 
It's got the aerial hubs in it because it shows how old it is. And that's um, a 1961. And I'm the, th that the third owner from you. And it's never, ever been out of deal. Really? No, really? it's never been out of deal. <laughs> so it's low mileage then, that's for sure. <laughs> ish? Yeah, ish. Um, next to it, we've got Royal Enfield. Now, that's, that's a modern one, yeah. um, which is uh, a bit of a modern classic as well, I'd say. Yeah, that is um, the uh, Interceptor. Um, I bought that brand new. It's done 900 mile. Very good bike. Six gears, though, too many. Um, it's faultless, really. It's, it's boring yeah. again. Yeah, another one, yeah. another one. But it's a nice bike to have. The other one there is the um, Moto Guzzi Roma V7. I fell in love with that. V9. V9, sorry, V9. yeah, V9. I can't see from here, yeah, V9. I had, <laughs> but I did have a V7 oh, right. as well. It had crash bars on it and everything. Yeah. That was a good bike. Yeah, yeah. It's a black one, like a, 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 a police bike that was, but that's a V9. And I fell in love with that because the tank, it's a very special tank on that. Brilliant. Then we, then we got the Harley. The Harley. Now, the, these, you've had a number of Harleys over the years as well, haven't you? So uh, this is the only one you've got in the collection at the moment? Yes, it is. Yeah, I, I've had two, um, well, two pan heads. So I yep. did Route 66 on yep. a pan head okay. before I did it on the, the Triumph. And that is the, um, the same model as the Schwarzenegger film, the um, Terminator. It's, uh, it's a fat boy with the um, um, 450cc engine. And that's 1450? Yeah, 1450, yeah. yeah. So, and it brings out, you're in a bad boy, that one does. Here we have perched on top of here, a sweet little creature. What, what is this, Dave? Yeah, that's a paratrooper's bike. They used to throw out with the, with the, in a big canister and then open it up when it landed on the ground. Wants a bit of work. I've had it for quite a while. I haven't really got around to finishing it off. And that goes with the, the Jeep, which is over the other side there, right. when I go to shows. Excellent, excellent. Well, we hope to see that one out, out in the future in, in the real world. We have another little part of the empire, which is a fascinating room, just full of stuff, uh, and some very interesting bikes. I think we're going to start on, on the right, this little gold thing. Tell us about this one, Dave. Yeah, that's the um, era, Golden Era Lara. That was the fastest motorbike in the 60s for the, the, um, the learners, which you could go up to a 250C. And it's that. a two-stroke. It smokes a bit. Um, very, very unique you, style, though. Yeah, but you because you have to run it on 30 SIE 30 mm -hmm. with the mix with the petrol. That's right. why it smokes. Yeah, yeah. Next to it is the Bantam. Beautiful. It's one of the last ones made, which is a 175, and it's got four gears. It's quite runs quite nicely. And, and you were saying that quite a lot of uh, manufacturers used the basic design yeah it was the um it was the uh, auto union made the first look um, motorcycle and after the war everybody copied it yeah uh, bsa copied it the most and called it a bantam the russians copied it um and also the americans copied it and they called it a hummer yamaha copied it and called it a y1 but B bsa copied it the most and uh, called it a Bantam. And that was a, originally a German design, though. Yeah. So, uh, well, yeah. there you go. Auto, Auto Union. There you go. Always a good design. Yeah. And uh, being well copied. Right. Now, up on the ramp, what have we got here? This is under a bit of work going on in this one. Yeah, that's a 16H, 1927. Um, I'm having the tank done on that, and it's got pie crust bottom to it. So it's, got, it's a bit special to be made, that is. And that's a 500cc side valve. And that's, that's fairly recently acquired, along with, it, with another one that we've got in here as well, which I think we'll come around to in a sec. Yeah. Um, but I say mo moving around. Yeah, that's that, that one. That's that that's one. That's the other one, which I've got the two together, and the tank needs doing on that one as well. Right. And that's a 500 Model 18, 1920, 1933. That one. Beautiful, great fishtail exhaust on it as well. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, an over, an, an exposed, exposed um, exhaust and okay. inlet valves. 
Lovely job. And it's also got a brass car bread on it as well. Stunning. Uh, alongside it, we've got uh, one of your two Stevens yeah. specials. That's um, Albert, Albert John Stevens, AJS, because um, there were three brothers and they made motorcycles, or one of them did, at AJ Stevens in at Wolverhampton. And there was a family business there with three brothers. Yeah. And they made stuff for the war as well. In 1930, Albert John Stevens, AJS, sold his name to Collier Brothers, who make Matchless in, from Plumstead. So he thought he could carry on making motorcycles. They stopped him after two years. So anything from between 1930 and 32 is a rare bike, and it's made by Albert John Stevens. And it's got the plate on the side, the brass one, which says, made by AJ Stevens, Wolverhampton. Excellent. That, that is a rarity. AJS to everybody else. And next to that, again, is another famous set of initials, JAP, but you've, you've got a really early one which you can tell us about. Well, JAP stands for John Alfred Presswich, who made all the engines in the early days. Uh, and then everyone bought his engine uh, to put in their frames. And that engine there is his first overhead valve engine. Uh, 1923 the bike is, it's a 350, and it cost 130 guineas in 1923. Mm. Well, then you could buy a couple of terrace uh, houses yeah. for that sort of yes. price then. Yeah. And it's even got the drum brake on the front, but the band brake on the back. And it was sold at, as the 90 mile an hour sportsman's mount, and I've got the bill of sale with it as well. Brilliant. Terrifying speed for those times, I, I reckon so. Yeah. <laughs> and the roads weren't that brilliant. No. <laughs> and next to it, we've got a, lo a one again I love myself, which is a very rare four cylinder. Not not British, this one. That's, no. That is a Nimbus, isn't it? Yeah, Danish. And that's the only bike that Danes made from the 30s right up to the end of the 50s and never altered the design. Because yeah. it was um, a Hoover factory with, two, with um, two people, partners in it, and one of them started making motorbikes. And it's got shaft drive and 750 engine, exposed valves and springs out the side. And it's a, um, and it's all made by hand. The press steel well. frame, is that? Yeah, press steel frame like the Titanic yeah. with rivets in it. Fabulous. <laughs> and at the end of the row, we've got another non-Brit bike, the East European. Yeah, it's a um, MZ Trophy, 250cc, two-stroke, and the engine's on rubber. A very smooth motorcycle. Rubber mounted. Yeah. 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 Hugely practical. Um, some really clever design work on that as well. I mean, the, the, the way that they've gone for function, perhaps over form, but, you know, big headlight, comfy seat, cracking bike. Yeah. Lovely. The headlight stays there, and when you move the steering round... I fell in love with it because it looks like a torch <laughs> that you grab hold of and go out with. <laughs> Brilliant. Greaves been going a long time. This this Greaves here is the um, is the Anglia. Now they've start they made started making Greaves again and they got rid of all the little problems on it like the balance of crank and done stuff with the cylinders and put another gear on it and electronic okay. ignition. So. Um, and that is about it. That is about two, the year two thousand. That one, when they started making the year them again. Greaves. Yeah, because they start the company Anglia started yeah. making them again. As you can see, it's got the aluminium down tube, yeah. what Greaves has, but it hasn't got the um, leading link uh, forks on it. Yeah. So that's sort of um, a reincarnation. Uh, done so that you can really rev it and use it without it going wrong. It's a stylish looking little bike as well. So, uh, <laughs> hopefully we might see some of those up at the uh, the Heritage Sprint this summer if, if we can persuade you to bring some more up there. Great. Uh, we... Give us a plug, Adam, on what the Heritage okay, Sprint Well, the, the Heritage Sprint is a, a classic bike race and uh, show that we hold in uh, East Kent in the summer in August. 
and Dave here has been very generous in, in uh, putting bikes on track racing and also on display. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we will see quite a number of these actually on, uh, on site in August. So, so down, down here we've got some, some sweet little racing kiddie sized bikes. Um, they've got an interesting background as well, haven't they, Dave? Yeah, because um, in Mallorca I had a business there 38 years renting out motorcycles and the most famous was that we'll see it in a minute is a Vespino uh, which two people go on a 49cc air cooled and um, and I made a lot of things out of that engine so I made a cut I cut them all down and made mini bike mini mo motorbikes out of them and this one's got a sidecar on and your lads used to ride these when they were kiddies, is that yeah, right? Yeah, they used to ride them, yeah. yeah. And I brought back a load of engines so I could go and manufacture and start selling them, but I never got round to it in the <laughs> end. But I still got all the bits and the pieces. Yep. And incidentally, uh, Vespa, uh, Vespino, they stopped making the, um, the, the motorbike because it wouldn't stand up to the emissions. Oh, okay. it, was, it was too fast, yep. so they dropped the model. But you've, you've acquired quite a few spares and we will be seeing uh, some, some of the other stuff that you've done with them, which is uh, In a minute, fascinating. Yeah, yeah very unique machines. It hasn't got two wheels, but actually this one's got six altogether. There's a Jeep and something else. Tell us about these two. Oh yeah, the Jeep um, I've had since um, 1990 and travelling to and through to Mallorca with it every time with the trailer on the back. And um, I've rebuilt it twice. I rebuilt it here when we had COVID. Yep. And I rebuilt it in 1990 in Mallorca. And I go to a lot of shows with it. And it's um, made by Willys. No, it's made by Ebro under license by Willys right. for Franco's Army. Ah. Uh -huh. And it's got the diesel four, um, 4108 diesel in it, Perkins. And that's how it is made. Like that. There's not many of these. There's, there's plenty of Willys, the petrol ones, but not many diesel, diesel ones. Okay. Like I said, over 15 years travelling to and through to Mallorca with it. And, and, and inside there, is, that's an electric. Um, electric? Yeah, it's an electric bike, like the parachuter's bike. Yeah, yeah, collapsible. So you can use it, you know, if you're in a park somewhere and you want to go and pick so, something up. And how old is the bike? The bike? Yeah. Um, 10, about 15 year old that is. So here we have a, another room full of wonderful machinery and the first one in the row here is uh, another Stevens, um, which we had actually have, have had up at the uh, Heritage Sprint yeah, on track. Yeah, Sprint, yeah, two year ago. Well, three year ago now it would be, wouldn't it? And that's, what size is that Yeah, one? that's the um, 250. Right. 250, overhead valve, that's the, that's the only overhead valve that, um, Albert John Stevens made and um, it's got four gears as well instead of three and that's a Stevens again which is very rare and that's a 1931. Right so that's a very early one. Totally different sort of bike next to it, very very different, the Hercules. What's, what's this all about? Yeah Hercules Wankel, it could be Hercules or DKW, made in Germany uh, with the Satch engine, that's the very first one, and that is 1972. Um, it could be three, 300 cc, it could be a 650 cc. Well, whatever they uh, wanted to say on the day. Yeah, and it's a two-stroke, very smooth. It's got six gears, and it runs very well. And fascinating. It's got a very unusual sound, which we can't hear at the moment, but hopefully we might hear uh, outside yeah. later on. Yeah, and it's called the Wankel 2000 because he only made 2000. OK. And they sold them right up to about 1976 from a warehouse. Brilliant. And, uh, and apparently with the museums, they said there's only four on the road. Really? Yeah, well, and that's one, one of we've them. seen on the road. Because so the tips good. had a problem with the oh, tips. Yeah, the rotor tips, yeah. Now the next one is obviously where Triumph styled their recent bobber from, but this is the original. <laughs> what is this? Oh right, it's a Speed Twin, 500cc, uh, 1952, the last one with um, the uh, uh, mag and, um, and dynamo. And it's got a BTH mag on it, and it's got a sprung hub on the back. And the colour scheme is almost identical to the modern bike as well. They didn't even rethink the colour, so that, that's yeah. great. Um, Maroon. Now we come to a couple of beezers. Yeah. What have we got here? Right, one, it's a golden flash. 
500 cc, no, it's a 650 cc, sorry, and it's a plunger, and that's about a 1954. They had a lot of those on sidecars, and it's got the iron head on it. And the green one next to it. The next one was beautiful. is a uh, is a 500 A7 shooting star. Beautiful, beautiful. 1963. Beautiful. That one is absolute stunning. Uh, that was one of my the first motorbike I had was this one, and I stripped everything off of it and made it into a Rocket Gold Star lookalike. Yeah, and it would do 108 at 7,000 revs. Oh. With Spitfire cam in, because I never weighed a lot then. <laughs> and it was very quick bike, and it's exactly the same as this one here behind you there. That's what I made it into, a Rocket Gold Star lookalike. Ah. That one there. That's it. Matchless here, which is um, a nice big twin. Yeah, this one's a, it's the uh, Matchless uh, Clubman, 600 cc, 1958. And it's the only match of this that come out the factory with reverse megas on. Right. Which are megaphones, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. he did it for one year. And next to it is a um, GT Continental. That's the latest model because the, the early one was a, a 250cc yeah. a, a cl club racer, which all the two um, the um, learner boys had. Yeah. Which was quite it's a style fast. very yeah. much the and same. And that's a 500 cc. No. Now this here is a Vespino we we're talking about that I used to rent out in Mallorca. I went from Mallorca on it to uh, John the Groats and Lands End, and then back to Mallorca on it. How was Six. the backside? That all right, and even though it's got a square seat, and uh, I've made a lot of things out of that engine. Two engines in the trike, I've made. And I drove that to from Mallorca back here too. Got it MOT'd and went back with it. That's and it's cool. a very good, um, very good moped. You don't even have to pedal it going up a hill. Quite but an they epic journey. They stopped making them because the emissions were too high. Yeah. Uh, and that's what the mini motorbikes were made out of. Oh yes, of that. Yeah, same engines. So we we spoke about the the replica there, but here we have a DVD, a genuine original. Yeah, 1961. I'm the second owner from you with double RT two gearbox and GP carburetor. And uh, over un, over 60 mile an hour in first, and supposedly 118 in top. Whoa. And that's Whoa. a 500. That's, and it ticks over okay as well. That's quite a beast. And then, and then the final one in the collection in this room is the one we also saw at the, the Heritage Sprint again this year. And you were out on track with this one. Yeah, the Bonneville. I had a Bonneville when I was a teenager. Exactly the same year as this, and that's why I wanted another one. And this is totally original. It went to America and come back, and it's even got the eight stud head and barrel on it. And it's a 650 Bonneville, 1961, I think it is, or it might be 60. And it, but it's the only, they only did blue for one year, and a lot of them went to America. Right. And that, that's pretty much identical colour again to the modern one that you got in, in the other room, isn't it? Same sort of blue. Yeah. Very yeah. impressive. Lovely, lovely, lovely bike. Yeah. Oh, that's fabulous. And I revved it. Every three gears I got into at your sprint, 7,000 in each gear. And that's what I like to hear, a bike being used as it, it should It really did go well. Yeah, Very fabulous. happy with it. Here we have Dave's walk-in toolbox, which is a fan fascinating little area. <laughs> Dave. Yeah, um, everything is quite close in here, of course, because it's like, like, like Adam said, it's my walk-in toolbox, where I've got all my stuff, my spares, my nuts and bolts, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, this is where I made the... Um, the new, the the, um, the bolt on kit for the uh, the new gold star, the centre stand and the handrail. I made all the prototype in here. Now it's being made um, by um, um, Jet Laser Jets. So I'll so be they'll be out soon with that. You're actually going to be putting those on the market to, for for modern BSA owners, which is uh, yeah. I think will be a big plus for them. So we we'll look forward to seeing that out there soon. That's and brilliant. this is all run by solar power, isn't it? Yes, what, yeah. solar panels and a wind turbine. 
<laughs> and there's there's all the there's all the the charging units there, and the batteries are under there, and the um, inverter. And the charging unit for your electric bike as well, which we might yeah, see in a second. Yeah, there's these two. Yeah. Them two onto them two. That's the electric bike. So here we are in, in the final room of yours. And although there's a couple of four-wheelers in here, um, they are very special. And I think if we didn't show them, we wouldn't be showing who Dave is as well. This beautiful old Cortina is not just an ordinary Cortina. Dave, over to you, mate. Tell us about no, this. No, it's the, um, they only made uh, the Mark I Lotus Cortina for um, three years. But this is an altogether the Mark One Lotus, the Mark One Cortinas have made one million ten thousand, but they only made three thousand Lotuses. Uh, this is one of twenty-five with the original body shell, and the production line was three years, right. and it was developed by Colin Chapman, Mr. Lotus. And this is the last one, 1966. Absolutely. And there's the very first tax disc. When it yeah. was built. Oh, yeah, November 67. And it was owned before me, a chap, 35 years. Yeah. His name was David Martin. He's in the original log book. And, um, and I was lucky enough to buy it off of Let's him. Let's have a quick look at the engine, because this is something special. Every Lotus Cortina has got the VIN mark, and it's got to have on it 6 S S S, which that has got on it there. And there's other things like the bump in the boot where the axle goes through, um, drill marks where the, uh, the, they fitted the um, roll bar on the back, and um, things inside like the original steering wheel, we haven't got rivets in it, it's, yeah. um, it's a made... A racing one. A racing one. And it's got the, um, it's got the um, Indianapolis 500 certificate and badge. I'll on there the as well. Bit, yeah. No, it's beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Show us the trick with the door as well, because that was quite. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So the yeah, the build quality on this. So this is like a handmade car, but I mean, you know, you're looking at a car from the '60s, and look at the quality of, of fit and finish on that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's. Uh, you don't get that. You just don't get that elsewhere. Yeah, this is uh, my dream car of my life. Yeah. When I was 16, I had the GT um, Cortina Mark One, but I couldn't afford the Lotus, and now I've been looking for this all my life. Well, you... And uh, be careful, there's loads of copies. Yeah. And so moving behind you, now this is a Ford from an altogether different generation. It's a Ford T. Yeah, it's a Model T. Henry Ford's first production car. This is 1919. The first one was 19, 19, 20, 1908 was the first one. It's got a two litre engine. Every single um, Model T is made in Detroit. There was factories all over the place and they was to assemble the cars and it would be brought to the assembly line by uh, ship from Detroit, all in a flat pack, and that's where they used to put them together. This one here is right hand drive, and this was assembled in um, Old Trafford at Manchester in 1919, of which I've got the certificate for. And, so and the chassis, and at Fast, they, they designed it to, to yeah. make it robust. Yeah. And, uh... the very, yeah, the roads were very rough and muddy in 1908, so. Henry Ford made it twists all over the place so it don't crack up. Look at this, look. It all moves about all over the place when you go over the bumps. <laughs> so that it flexes. Not fracturing. Can, no, and you can go one wheel up the bank there and you look behind you and the back is straight. It twists that yeah. much. On the back of the engine, the, the gearbox, is a big ball joint that makes the engine move totally different for the rest of the chassis. Fascinating. And, and the steel that it was constructed from is pretty special as well, rust-free apparently. Yeah, the, it's Canada steel and it's got, it's got um, cadmium in it. Right. And when you try to drill it, it's very difficult to drill. <laughs> That's why it didn't rust. Yeah. 
Well, it's, it's, be it's a beautiful piece of kit, and I think... And it, altogether, he made 15 million. And you've got one of them. Yeah, one of them, yeah. <laughs> not many left now, though. Oh, not many left, but you can, you can get the spares, no problem yeah. at all, from in America. Yeah. And also there's the clubs, of course. And I, I think it's it's a worthy addition to the, the Classic Motorcycle yeah. channel as well. So um, we're going to finish up with the last two bikes in your well, collection. I, I, I could tell you a lot more about this, but I, I, I do we're know this, a bit short. <laughs> I've been short for quite a while, mate. But, um, <laughs> We're going to move back to the, la the last two bikes in this collection. Um, two quite different beasts, the T3 Guzzi, which you, you've had for a while. Yeah. Um, this is a Mervin Electric, which uh, does, um, on two batteries, 80 mile and a speed of 50 mile an hour. And you've got three settings. One setting is for 20 mile an hour, for the speed limit, it right. won't go over that. Right. Then you go through a 30 mile an hour, that's number two setting, it won't go over 30. And then number three is 50 mile an hour. Like cruise control. Yeah. Very cool. And it's a stylish looking little thing as well. Very, yeah, very Yeah, the different. bag comes off the back, just like that, with the little bracket on it, to very go cool. shopping with. Yeah. It's your own private handbag. Yeah, but I had to make a, st um, a rack for the back so I could get, get something else on the back of it, so I made that and put it on. Very neat. Looks, looks like factory stuff. And got it powder coated. Yeah, yeah it looks really tasty. Um, and then the final one here is, is the Guzzi. Um, beautiful, beautiful condition. Very unusual, well, quite an unusual colour. Yeah, it's, um, it's the um, 850 T3. And the T3 is when you put your foot brake on, three brakes come on, because you've got two discs at the front. The and one the, the link braking system on that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now that's um, very beautiful. And the same this bike, I used to travel four years when I first started in Mallorca in 1982. Um, to and fro to Mallorca on one of these for four years. Lovely bike. It looks a nice, comfortable seat as well. I imagine yeah. that's a very comfortable tourer. Yeah, a Motor Guzzi 850cc. Yeah. We have a, a, an impressive sign here, Death Hill. What's that all about? Well, in the 60s, um, there was a hill on the old, um, in the old um, A20, past Johnson's and carry on a bit further up near Brands Hatch where you come out to there. And it was uh, a hill which everyone went down in the 60s if they couldn't get 100 mile an hour on the bike. But down Death Hill, yeah. well, it wasn't called Death Hill then, you could get a ton out your bike, the magic ton in the 60s. So the council put the sign up because there's a lot of pe accidents happening on motorbikes there and they put the sign up, Death Hill, at the bottom of it, trying to discourage some people. Right. But that carried on through the 60s and then in the 70s, the council put the original sign back up there and auctioned off Death Hill sign, and it went for quite a lot of money then. So this is the, the original... early 70s, yep. and that is the original, original sign. Side. And you can see where people have scratched stuff in it, and they tried to rip it off the post, and there's the original Ben yeah. mark. And I have got photographs from the 60s with people side to side on their bike. When you um, zoom in on it, you can see the scratches, you can see the but that... it's been certified it's original sign impressive you're obviously in, well into your bsa's but you've also got this modern uh, gold star and you've done a few bits to this um we heard about the uh, center stand earlier but tell us what else you've uh, managed to do with this bike uh yeah um altered the rear mud guard so because I, I as you see i've got the original gold star and i knew what i was going to do with this when i ordered it um alter the mud guard alter this and alter that so what i've done is put the wider mud guard on the back that goes right the way down metal, also the number plate holder, uh, got another number for it, uh, three by three, three letters and three numbers, and put that on. The ore box really is the other side, you take the case off to get to it, but I put here imitation ore box like the real gold star's got, with the cap there and the ore level there. Love it. And uh, polish that up on the gearbox, uh, took the, sign, the baffle out the back so it sounds more like a gold star on a motorbike should look like. Round this side is here is a damper. 
which all the old bikes used to have a damper on it. Put the proper hooter on the side, the classic hooter. Put a little extension on the, um, the side stand so it brings it up a little bit more instead of laying right over. Behind there is original ore box so I put a cover over that to make it look like a toolbox with the screw on it. Really and gives yeah, I'm nice very touches. happy with it. And so far, I don't, I've had it that long, and I've done 7,000 mile with it, and I've used it all through the winter. Very happy with it. But now I've designed a centre stand. It's a bolt-on centre stand, and it's a kit. So you've got a handle here, the lever comes up there, and you push that down, and the centre stand goes up, and it works very nicely, because BSA are not making one. So I thought I would design one. And now it's been all um, um, jet flowed, I think it is, all cut out of the metal from my prototype. Yep. And we'll hopefully uh, be putting it on the market fairly soon. Yeah, I've sold five already. Brilliant. Now, I imagine there'll be a big demand for that. Yeah. As you say, centre stand is a, is, a, is a very practical exactly. thing. Exactly. Well, you've got to have a centre stand yeah. because you've got to clean your wheel. Yeah. And you lift the front up like that and you clean the front wheel. And you all your chain, yep. and you can get your rear wheel out yep. if you get a puncher, because yep. you only got off the side of a curb with the centre stand and drop the wheel out. Well, I, I wish you luck with that, because I suspect you'll do you'll do very well. I think we've got to say big thanks to Dave for 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 all his time today. Really, it's been a, a fascinating little trip down various memory lanes, both of Dave's and and mine and everybody else's. I expect um, great stuff. Thanks very much, and hopefully we'll see you the bikes um down at the heritage sprint in the summer this year yeah, this yeah. year and uh, see the things in the flesh there thanks very much